Hey, how's everybody out there doing? Everybody doing good? Welcome to another Saturday Night Live, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I appreciate everybody being here, everybody joining um, in. I don't know if everybody noticed or not or saw in the community tab. We broke 7,000 subscribers. Ooh. What is really taking place and how this is going to affect us. So the question today in today's video is, do you have prepared what you need to survive the coming storm? And what I'm talking about is things we're going to go over right now. All right. Do you have non-perishable foods? Anything that's non-perishable doesn't have to be refrigerated, doesn't have to be frozen, and none of that type of stuff. Non-perishable foods. Do you have canned goods? Now, this could be canned goods from as far as vegetables, canned potatoes. You could have canned sauce. You could have canned ravioli, canned corned beef hash, whatever it could be. You also have to make sure that you have canned meats to go along with the canned goods and the non-perishable foods because that could be a crucial point in your prepping. And then one main thing that you really want to make sure that you really do have is a manual can opener, all right? Um, it's it's one thing if you have all these canned goods and stuff, and if they're not the pull tops, if you don't have a manual can opener, if you are new to prepping, all right, you're pretty much screwed. You're gonna be trying to open these things with a knife or something like that, and more than likely you're gonna end up cutting yourself. So buy yourself, you can go to the dollar store and buy a a manual can opener for probably, well, it's not a dollar anymore. So probably a, a, a buck 25, buck 50. All right. Whatever they're charging now. All right. The other things that you really want to think about is do you have some way to cook? All right. So if the power's out, it's just if the, the grid goes down, the power's out and everything else, if you have an electric stove, you can't cook. If you have a gas stove, you can cook. Even if you have um, you know, the, the pilot light and stuff, all you have to use is either matches or a lighter or something. And you can still light the stove. You still have gas. Now that could be propane. It could be natural gas, whichever one. You could also have something like a Coleman stove. Um, you could have something like a gas one. You could have any of those type of things that use butane, um, that use uh, propane. You can buy adapters and switch things around. I mean, there's all different types of ways of doing this. There's many, many options out there when it comes to cooking. You can also cook over just a plain old open fire. If you're going to do that, I would highly suggest that you would invest into a few cast iron pots and pans. For the simple fact is your really good set that is in your kitchen may not really like being over an open flame. If you kind of get what I'm talking about here, folks. So... <clears throat> having maybe a cast iron pan or two, uh, like a Dutch oven and a cast iron pan, just those two things will cover you and you can cook over anything. All right. Do you have flashlights and do you have extra batteries or do you have batteries that are rechargeable? Now with your flashlights and stuff, you can get rechargeable flashlights. You can also get, you know, all different types of flashlights. You can get headlamps, flashlights. Um, you can get the flashlights that'll clip onto your clothes, um, all that kind of stuff. There's several different options out there for you and several different categories of price. So it's, you don't have to break the bank. These two flashlights that I'm giving away and stuff, I mean, they're really, really good flashlights, but they don't break the bank. And it's a two-pack deal. So you have one that you can probably maybe put in your car. And then you have one that you can carry with you or however you want to do it. Put it in your go bag or whatever. But there's options there. Something else that you have to really think about when you have rechargeable items. Now, with your rechargeable items, you have to have some way to charge them, right? I mean, it's, you know, you have batteries and stuff, but batteries are only last so long. And depending on what type of a um, situation that we are in, it could, you know, turn out pretty bad for you if you, all of a sudden you run out of, well, no power. So having some way to recharge these things is crucial. So do you really want to look into 
battery banks. They have battery banks in all different sizes. You can get battery banks that'll charge your cell phone and a flashlight. You, and they're small. You can get battery banks that will run more things. Um, and you can get those anywhere from, um, I've seen them as little as 50 watts, all the way up to 2000. I mean, they're huge. It's all in what you can afford. If you follow along and you literally watch for some good deals, sometimes you can get some really good deals on different battery banks. Maybe you have generators. Like I have battery banks. I have a generator. Um, I, I do live in Florida and I am prepped for hurricanes. All right. And most people that probably live here in the state of Florida, that's one thing that you do prep for is hurricane season because you never know how long the power could be out. You don't know how bad the storm could get and you don't know what is going to take place. So you have to be ready. I mean, you have to have different backups. You have to have a backup for the backup, if you get what I'm saying, and then have another backup. So having, you know, battery banks, having generators, extra gas. If you got battery banks, you have to have a solar panel to charge the battery banks. So this way here, you know, you're, you always have power going. Yes, you can run out of gas, but if you have, long as you have your solar and you have your battery banks, you can keep charging those items up and they will last for quite a long time. You wanna make sure that you do have extra water. And do you have ways to catch water? All right, it's one thing to have water, but do you have some way to catch it? They actually sell these really cool, portable, collapsible water catches. And they're made to put like underneath an eave or uh, a downspout or something like this. And you can actually catch water in these things. And they range anywhere between 25 gallons to 100 gallons, but they're actually portable. Now, it's not something you want to really be dragging around or something. You don't want to ruin it, but having some way to catch water. And then if you can filter the water and everything else, and if you still want to, you know, make sure that you're doing everything proper. If once you filtered it, if you don't feel too comfortable, well, then you could always boil it. And that way there, you're, you're killing off any bacteria that could be left once it's been filtered and everything else but having some way to have water because water is the biggest and the hardest thing for people to store. It takes up so much room in your home and you want to make sure that you do have, you want a gallon of water a day for per person. So you have to do the math depending on how big of you, you know, your household and stuff is, you got to do the math and you got to figure it out, you know, or you want to make sure that you have some way to catch the water and say rainy season or, whatever it could be, if you have ways to catch the water and everything this way here, you are ahead of the game because water is one of the main things that you have to have to survive. You can survive longer without food than you can water. Remember that folks, longer without food than you can water. Just a fact, all right? Now, something else you wanna make sure that you're doing. Make sure that you have a decent first aid kit. All right. Now you buy whatever you can afford because right now first aid kits have gone up in price a lot, even at Walmart folks. So the first aid kits have gone up, but you want to make sure that you have a decent first aid kit. You want to have stuff in there in case somebody breaks something. You want to be able to um, try to deal with the situation because not knowing what the situation you're in you're going to have to deal with this because maybe you can't get to help and maybe help can't get to you. You know, you treat this kind of like um, if you want to look at it as an SHTF situation, but you can also look at it as, you know, a, a really strong hurricane will give you the same effect as a SHTF situation in a short time. All right, there is an ending period to it. Help will eventually arrive shortly after the storm. You know, usually within 24 to 48 hours, somebody is probably rolling into your neighborhood unless it was a category five and it's been totally obliviated and people have to, you know, fly in or whatever else to try to bring supplies and stuff into whoever survived. 
but having a first aid kit and knowing how to use those products. Now you can buy small little manuals, all right? And you can keep those in the first aid kit to explain to you how to mend and how to take care of a broken bone, how to wrap it up, how to make a makeshift splint, um, how to deal with uh, severe cuts and how to use a tourniquet. And that goes over all these different types of things, but you can have a good first aid kit. Next on the list is you wanna make sure that you have contractor bags. Now, when you're looking at your contractor bags, try to find the contractor bags that are the thickest mill possible. So they usually range anywhere between uh, three and six mil and maybe more depending on your area, but the thicker the mill, the better because you can use those contractor bags for just about anything, folks. You can, um, you can seal up stuff. You can seal a hole, a window. You can patch a window with it for the time being. You can also use it to uh, keep stuff dry if something happens and, you know, your roof's leaking or you have to leave. You don't have a backpack and, you know, this type of stuff. You can keep things dry. You can use it to make shelters. You can use it to make a rain poncho. You can use it to catch water so you have something to drink. There's a lot of things that those contractor bags will do in an emergency type situation. You also want to make sure that maybe depending on where you live and what type of situations you run into, having the thick plastic rolls. Now, I'm not saying you have to buy like 500 yards of this stuff, but a couple hundred yards with some good sturdy duct tape, gorilla tape, and that type of stuff would come in very handy in a really bad situation. If windows are blown out, if for some reason you have um, holes in the roof, um, having something like this where you can try to secure things would be a great blessing in that point in time of your scenario. You also wanna make sure that you do have um, your basic tools. Your basic tools, what I'm talking about is like your hammer, your nails, screws, screwdrivers, uh, pliers, and this type of stuff, a basic toolkit. Probably even some Allen wrenches probably wouldn't be a bad thing either. Now, when you're dealing with having just some basic tools, I'm not saying you have to carry a 50 pound toolbox. That's why I want you to have a small basic toolkit that's very easy for you to be able to handle. Now, it depends, you know, you could be young and you can grab the 50 pound toolbox but tools are heavy. So, you know, you may want to make sure maybe you're older, but you still want to have these things. You want to make sure that you have something smaller. And this way here, it's easier for you to handle in case you need to get a hold of it, pick it up and set it up on a counter or something. You can do it without hurting yourself. The whole point of being a prepper is always trying to think ahead and making sure that you're being safe, you're working safe. And this way here, you have a better chance of surviving the situation instead of just running into, say, like a burning house and you have no protection and you're trying to save whatever and you're risking your own life. So you're always planning ahead. You want to make sure that you have what you do need. You want to make sure that you are looking into candles. Now, a lot of people, even the government, a lot of people are very leery of using regular candles. Now, if you have young children or animals, I would try to stay away from using regular candles because the last thing you want is a fire in your home when it is already an emergency situation. So you can always go with the other routes. You can get the battery powered candles. You can get the solar powered candles. So during the daytime, you could set them outside. They'll charge up. And at nighttime, you have light to use inside. Something else that you really want to really think about that a lot of people don't think about a lot of times is, you know, out in your yards. Now, depending on where you live, maybe you don't have them out right now, or maybe you don't have them at all, but you have the solar lights you can buy. All right. The solar lights, you can line your driveways, your walk paths, your backyard, your bushes and shrubs and all this. You see all, you know, all the yards and stuff. A lot of people have these things. But don't forget, those things will come in handy if it's a grid down type situation and there's no power. You have power, 
you have lights right out in your yard. You can go out there and bring those things in and most of them will come off of the stick that you put into the ground and you can set them around inside your house. And this way here, you have light. And then during the daytime, pop them back on a stick, stick them back out in the sun. And at nighttime, you have light again. So it's just another thing that you have to really think about. Okay. Um, uh, the solar candles, that really goes along with the solar powered, um, but they do have solar candles that you can buy and they charge up with the light. Um, one important thing that you want to make sure that you do have is some way to start a fire or to light a stove. Um, this way here, if something happens and you do have, say, like a Coleman stove, well, you have to have some way to light it. So you got to have either matches, waterproof matches. you got to have a lighter. Um, a ferro rod would work perfect, um, but that's more for, you can use it to light a Coleman, but you know, you got to be very careful because you don't want to flash up. But a ferro rod will come in handy for lighting a fire in the woods or outdoors or whatever else. You know, that's a whole different type of a ball game right there. Um, so having some way that you can get fire going to make sure that you can cook, you can sanitize water, you can heat water for if you need to clean up and take a bath, whatever. Um, there's many reasons why the fire is there to keep you warm. Um, it could be to keep predators away. Um, there's a whole list of things and that's why it's very important for you to have those type of things to make sure that you can make fire when you need to. You want to make sure that you do have a go bag and it's ready to go. It's just not empty sitting in the closet. You always want to make sure that the thing is packed and you have all your different supplies and everything that you need in there that you can survive for at least 72 hours with that pack. That's the key. 72 hours, that's what you want to survive with with that pack. Because let's face it, most people are not going to be able to carry a 50, 60 pound pack that's got, you know, two, three works, weeks worth of supplies and stuff in it. It's just not going to happen. So when you're doing your packs and you're doing all this kind of stuff, you want to make sure that you're looking into your freeze dried foods. Now, your freeze dried foods, I'm talking like your mountain house and all these type of where you can buy the single pack, not the number 10 cans, but the single packs. All right. So you can put them in there because usually that's two servings. So say it's you and your wife. And, you know, so you have two or three of those things in there. They weigh nothing. And all you have to do is have hot water to put in them. And then you both get a serving out of that pack. So you're getting a meal, both of you. You know, it gets a little bit more interesting when you have more people in your family. So if you're a family of four, that's why I'm a big advocate that everybody in the family. Now, this is within reason, but I believe everybody in the family should be carrying a backpack have any emergency backpack. And here's why. I've covered this in a video before. And what I mean by this is most kids that go to school nowadays carry a backpack. Their books that they carry in that backpack way more than probably what you're going to put in there for their survival. All right. It's atrocious with the amount of books that these kids have to carry around, even from a young age, all the way up into high school. Though the amount of weight that they carry on their backs and the studies that have been done that's why you see so many of these backpacks and stuff that are coming out that are economically and origamically, whatever, correct, so that it's saving their backs because it's killing these kids carrying all this heavy weight. So if you got to figure, if a kid's carrying 15, 20 pounds of books, there's no way, he, there's no reason he couldn't carry 10 to 15 pounds of supplies, food, maybe some clothes, you know, split it up a little bit, you know? I mean, everybody needs to, when it's an emergency type situation, everybody needs to help. You want to make sure, we're getting down to the end here, so you want to make sure that you do have maps of your area because more than likely, if something happens, your good old cell phone here isn't going to really work um, or you're not going to have service. It might work, so if you have an app or something that's on there and it has the option of the offline, like I have offline apps on there, so I could turn the phone on as long as the phone will turn on and I can access the app. You just don't get any like GPS coordinates where you're at on that map. So you got to know where you're at. But 
having just paper maps and stuff of your local area is probably a very good thing to have just in case that you do get off a beaten path and you don't know it that well you can get around and you can get out of that situation um you also want to make sure that you have cash and having cash is key right now cash is still good um you know, with the great reset and everything else, Lord only knows what's going to happen in the months to come. But right now, cash is still king. So having cash, small bills only. Ones, fives, tens. That's what you need. If you want to throw a few 20s in there, fine. Nothing any bigger. Because if it's a grid down type situation, and I've had it happen to me during hurricanes down here, after the storm has gone through, yes, 7-Eleven is open. Cash only because they're not taking in any credit cards or anything else. You can go in there and buy whatever you have. Uh, my particular 7-Eleven that this happened with, they brought in a truck that had ice on it and they were selling the ice. They were, I think they were two bucks a bag, cash only. And there was people there that were ticked off. It's like, doesn't anybody really think about this? I, I was just blown away. You know, I mean, they're giving the guy a hard time because he opened his store and he's selling ice and what supplies he has in the store, but it's only for cash. And people are standing with their credit cards, you know, and it's just like there's a hurricane coming. Um, Power is going to go out. How do you think your card's going to work? It's the mentality that we have to deal with that is what is really scaring a lot of people is they don't know how to plan for an emergency. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about real quick is the most important thing. And speaking of plans, you got to have a plan, folks. You got to have some type of a plan. You have to have something written down so that you know what to do, when to do it, and everything else. You have to be able to adjust to the changing conditions. You have to make sure that when things are going on, that you have a plan to fall back on. So this way here, it makes it so that you can survive. You don't have to think about what you have to do. You have it written down because no matter what, whatever the situation is and what's taking place and what's going on, well, folks, you have to realize, say you're a family of four, say you have two little kids, you have Johnny and Susie over here, all right? And the shit just hit the fan. Well, now you're worried about, okay, I have to do this. I have to get this. I have to make sure that these people are doing this. And, and you have to get all this. If you have it all written in a planner, if you have a plan, you're going to be able to execute it. You can stay calm. You can stay cool. You can stay collected. You can take your plan out. You can open up that thing up and there's your emergency plan. I have to get this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And at that point, you can probably have Johnny and Susie help you out and say, okay, go into the room in there and get this. Go into the room in there and get this. And this way here, you're getting a lot of help on both angles that people can really sit back and think about what they're really doing and concentrate on the severity of the situation that they are in at that point in time and how is the best and the safest way to survive that situation. And that's the key. The whole key is being able to survive the situation. You can have everything that I've listed off. You can have even, there's even more stuff out there, folks. I mean, we could sit here and probably talk about this for two or three hours. We can cover a lot of different things, but I'm giving you the basics of what you need. You can build off that and add anything you want to it because that's what's going to keep you alive that's what's going to help your family and you sustain in this type, a, a, a difficult type situation that more than likely you've never been through in your life and you've never had to deal with something like this and your stress level is already up here and you want to make sure that you can survive so the question stands, do you have prepared what you need to survive the coming storm? I hope so. Have a great week, folks. Stay safe.